Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the Gloss Exercise Podcast. Today we're going to talk about how to train and eat for your body type. So at the beginning of this podcast, we're going to talk about body types, specifically what kinds of body types there are and a little bit of detail about them. Then we're going to move to talking about metabolism and then we will move to talking about eating and some rules that I think you definitely have to stick by regardless of your body type. Then we're going to talk training and then I'm going to wrap it up. So to start with body types, there are different kinds of body types. So while we are all human beings and we're all of the human race and the human species, where there are different kinds of us, and that's just how we were born. It's just our genetics. It's like how you have uh, you might have brown hair, someone else in your life has black hair or different eye colors. Some of us just have different body types. So the first uh, body type I want to talk about is endomorph. Okay, and actually, you know what? I'll just talk about all three. We have endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph. Those three are the three body types, so you probably fall under one of those categories. Now, there, there's kind of a spectrum within these categories, like how much you have to play by the rules of an endomorph or an ectomorph. It really just depends on your genetics, and uh, that takes some self-awareness and, and figuring out yourself and you know how you eat, stuff like that. But uh, I'll break them down for you. So an endomorph is someone who maintains a high level of fat, they just have high body fat naturally. They put on fat very easily. You know, you don't really have to work very hard at, like, gaining size. I mean, you just always gain size. Like, you eat food and you know it's going to stick to you. You kind of have to think about what you're eating. There's a little bit of that guilt factor when you eat because you're not sure if it's going to make you fat. That's something an endomorph might have to work with. An ectomorph is the opposite. They're lean, tall, they have long limbs, they have a hard time putting on mass or weight or or body fat so complete opposite of endomorph you might be someone who's taller or lanky or you're you're very skinny you might have a hard time putting on mass you know while an endomorph might be insecure about being overweight an ectomorph might be insecure about being underweight okay so very two different kinds of people so whether you're an endo or an ecto there's there's kind of different scale of how much you struggle to put on weight or how much you struggle to lose weight so don't like what i'm trying to say is that it's, it's kind of a broad spectrum even though you'll fall under one of these three categories and then the last category is mesomorph so mesomorph is the in-between body type so that is someone who genetically um they're they're just well built they're kind of the ideal height the ideal size and and by, when i say ideal i'm talking about our, our society's perspective like from you know, first world country, what we define, actually, no, not even a first world country, just like from, from a human perspective, the people you look at and you think like they, they've got a good, they've got good body, stuff like that. They fall under the mesomorph category. And if you, if you're a mesomorph, you have a responsibility because you can let yourself go and you can put on fat easily, or you might get inactive and you might get skinny easily. There's, there's the pros and the cons. Okay, so um, you might have an easier time losing weight, but the factor is there. You might have been born with, you may have been born with this this great body type, but you can lose it if you're not careful. Not, and I really want to specify that while mesomorph is the in between, that's basically what makes it ideal. It's not the kind of person. It's just obviously you have a scale of like people who struggle with overweightness and people who struggle being underweight. The in-between is obviously the most ideal, right? So, not that anyone has any control over that. That's just reality. That's just how it is. So, you have to figure out which type you are. And the, the type of body type you have will impact the choices that you make. It'll impact the way that you eat, how much you eat. Um, it shouldn't impact the quality of what you eat, because no matter what body type you fall under, the quality should always be good. So, genetics obviously play a role. And, uh, like, one thing that genetics play a role in is your metabolism. So, metabolism, that word is thrown a lot, around a lot by people who I don't think they know what it means. And it's often used um, as, like, a crutch. Like, it's something to blame. So, if you struggle with being overweight, you might blame your metabolism. Oh, it's slow, it's not my fault. Or you see someone who's in good shape and you think, oh, I wish I had a good metabolism like them. So, metabolism is... The conversion of food or fuel into energy. Like it takes the things you eat, the carbs, the fats, the proteins, stuff like that. It takes what you eat and it converts it into energy. So 
the difference between my metabolism and your metabolism is just how efficient it is and you know how how powerful its abilities are or just like yeah, speed speed does play a role but it's really just that conversion of what you consume and, and turning it into energy it's also uh it, it's the efficiency or like its ability to eliminate waste from your body so it has to do with like your digestive tract it has to do with like if you eat something bad um, how your body is able to handle that and deal with it and push it through your body some people their metabolism might struggle with eliminating waste and i think a lot of people have a lot of weight just in them it's not a pleasant thing to talk about but like dried fecal matter in, in the intestinal tract or just waste that's just kind of clinging to your body because your your metabolism has trouble eliminating it and sometimes the solution to that is like you know detoxing or just making sure that you spend a few days eating only clean foods to flush all that waste out that, that your metabolism is struggling to get out so like I said earlier metabolism is kind of a word that's thrown a lo around a lot and it's kind of a it's to blame it it's kind of almost like a myth like I have to bust a myth when I'm talking about metabolism because it's not the reason that you're fat it's not the reason that you're not fat you know it's just it's there it's doing its job and it plays a role but it's not the reason right it, it's a factor of different sizes and scales depending on who you are but it, it's not the reason that you're fat unless of course like you know you have diabetes and that's different like you know there are some medical conditions that are obviously you can't get around and you can blame them because they're the actual it's an actual condition that you have but that is very rare like it's like even type 2 diabetes which is something that you i hate to say give it to yourself but you it's kind of progressive over your lifestyle choices and people who who are born without diabetes can get diabetes because of their bad lifestyle because they've consumed so much sugar that's type 2 diabetes type 1 is more something that you're born with so but even type 2 it's pretty rare so to blame your genetics for being fat is you're you're in a minority if that's the case and if if it is truly your metabolism and you have a medical condition that's one thing but I would actually go get that figured out I would actually go see a physician I would get the test done so you that not just so that you can blame it but so that you can learn how to work around it so you can learn to work with your body and, and the situation you have right not to blame it so the speed of your metabolism is not an excuse you shouldn't be blaming your metabolism so yeah I guess that's my first eating tip for you is that regardless of the kind of metabolism you have you should work with it because it's, it's there right like you can um, you can boost your metabolism with certain types of food or like, like even drinking water it can boost your metabolism up to 30 percent like that's that's the biggest tip I mean you'll find stuff out there that says spicy food makes your metabolism faster or do this kind of workout to speed up your metabolism I wouldn't worry about that stuff too much I would worry just like drinking more water will for sure help you because it helps break down food and it helps eliminate waste and it helps like every other aspect of your body because your body is pretty much water so in regards to metabolism I would just drink more water and then worry about the type of food you're putting into your body not like trying to make yourself some superhuman with some amazing metabolism it, it's kind of avoiding the real issue so I want to talk about like as we as we uh, go into the subject of eating three rules that you should go by regardless of the kind of body type you have that I mentioned earlier so the first rule is to find out what makes you feel full okay what foods do you eat that make you feel like just heavy like you want to have a nap or you feel bloated and, and feeling bloated there's there's two different kinds of full okay there's like satisfying full there's full like I ate too much and then there's bloated which is the swelling of your intestinal tract because you're eating foods that don't agree with you I know for a fact there are some foods out there that I love but they make me feel bloated and they make me my my intestines swell up and my stomach because 
they're not great foods. But I know that going into it, I'm accepting the risk, I'm accepting the consequence. Um, so really, no matter what type of body you have, you should be learning and, and understanding what foods make you feel full. And I'm not talking about like, oh, this huge meal versus a small meal. I mean, like, what would fill you up more? Like a, a big plate of spaghetti or a big fat steak? And I'm not talking about which one you would rather eat. I'm talking about realistically what's going to make you feel more full. So, and, and on the opposite of that, what foods don't make you feel full? What foods make you feel hungry? And you just, you need to eat so much of it to, to fill up. Like for me, that's protein. That, that's things like meat. If I have a meal that is just chicken and there are no carbs or anything else, I'm going to feel hungry pretty fast. Like I would say 20 to 30 minutes. And, and that's just me understanding myself. I, I guess I could be wrong, but that's, that's my understanding. And I notice that. But if I have a big plate of rice with my chicken, then it, it hits me and, and it sits longer. For me, it's the pasta. And for most people, you'll find it's the pasta because that's just how humans have evolved over time. We've evolved from hunting animals and living off berries to growing crops and things that can survive the winter. It's just as a society, how we've evolved. So most people you'll find it's carbs because carbs make up the majority of our diets. People often struggle with their carbs. They consume too much. They consume bad carbs. Carbs play a big role in uh, at least the North American diet. So, I mean, but I, I have talked to people who say that meat fills them up and it hits them like a rock. And then when they want to stay full, they eat a lot of meat. So it's going to be different for everybody. You know, it could be fats and... You know, that <laughs> if I have a lot of fat, it kind of just makes me feel gross. It makes me feel full, but but more like I want to stop eating. Not like, oh, I feel physically full. It's just like my body's like, eh, you've, you've had too much, too much calories. you got to stop. That's figuring out how much or how much food you need to make you feel full. And again, no matter what your body type is, one tip for that is to just make sure you're eating high quality foods. So if you're eating carbs or proteins or fats, just make sure that they're high quality. And if you can figure out what makes you feel full, then you can have your meals down to a science. How, how big of portions do you need of this versus this? And it makes it a lot easier for you to plan. So if you're trying to eat more or you're trying to eat less, you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, uh, knowing what makes you feel full and what the quality is of that food that you're eating will make a big difference for you. And in regards to the hunger factor, like if you're eating something very low calorie, you're going to get hungry again soon. Okay, high quality food might, your body has more to work with, it has more nutrients to absorb, takes a longer time, you know, it'll make you feel full and it'll make you feel good. But if you eat something like low quality, like McDonald's, it tastes really good and you, you know, like when you're eating those burgers, you can just inhale those things, you barely even have to chew them. They taste so good, but they're so soft and so dense with cal calories that there's not um, a whole lot your body can do with it, it kind of goes through the system very very quickly and then you get hungry again fast and as opposed to high quality foods now you don't feel so good now you kind of feel like garbage right there are some exceptions but uh, that's usually how it goes so that's um you know that has to do with unprocessed foods as well just low quality you know like what's uh, packaged up and sealed and you can tell that it's been put through machines you know like the whole processing process to make it last longer, give it longer shelf life, that kind of thing you want to avoid. So that's the first rule, and that's the one I'm going to talk about the most, obviously. <laughs> uh, the second rule is to limit your sugar intake. Regardless of your body type, limit your sugar intake. When you consume sugar, your, your body can't do a whole lot with it. And when you eat things with sugar in it, often there's a large amount of sugar, and your body immediately puts it into storage and contributes to your weight gain. So you know, there's not a lot your body can do with it. It's, it's a bit of like instant energy and it has to, you know, it has to do with uh, like a hormonal response in your body. But aside from that, it doesn't really do a whole lot of good for you. But sugar's out there and it's in everything. It's in fruits, you know, that's why fruits taste so sweet. Things that taste sweet, even natural sugars, right? Natural sugars are in a lot of things. So I would eliminate sugar as much as you can so that you have a bit of wiggle room for the things that naturally have sugar in them or things that just have to have sugar and you can't get around it 
if you avoid drinking pop and you avoid consuming things that are high sugar, then you don't have to worry about you know things that have a little bit of sugar in them. You're giving yourself a little bit of grace. It can make it a lot easier. And sugar is just really not going to help you at all, aside from temporary pleasure. The third rule is that make sure you're eating your fruits and veggies. I'm probably not the first person to tell you that. I'm not going to be the last, but it's really important because there's all of those vitamins and minerals in there. So regardless of the body type you have, it's important. Even if you, you know, you have, you struggle get, getting weight or you struggle, you know, like you can't keep the weight on. So you think, oh, I don't need to eat healthy. Like I'm always saying, I'm never going to get fat. It's going to affect you in other ways, you know, because your body needs these vitamins and minerals to function. It needs, you need them for your bones. You need them for your organs, stuff like that. Things are happening to you on the inside that you don't notice. It's not as external as putting on body fat. You need those vitamins and minerals to function efficiently. And so fruits and veggies, that's that's kind of like uh, all a part of having a balanced diet, right? So, and that, regardless of your body type, you should have a balanced diet. Fruits and veggies, you should be having meat unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan um, or you know, make the like carbs aren't the enemy. You just got to learn how to eat them, right? You just got to be smart. So consider all the food groups every day. And what I do, what works for me, because I, I'm not a big veggie eater. I'm learning to like them over time. Uh, is that, or maybe you're not a big fruit eater. I find my favorite ones and I double down on those ones. I eat those. I'll just buy more of those. I'll eat the most of those. Or what I've been doing lately is that um, I've, I've been buying V8s, like they're like one serving of vegetables blended together and they're really salty, which I like, I like really salty things. So I know that I'm getting my vitamins there. So I don't have to think about adding them to meals. That's just personally what I do, especially from struggling. Uh, those were rules that all body types should have. So let's talk about more specifically what body type you have, how you should be eating. So let's start with endomorph again. So if you're an endomorph, you're going to have to work harder at burning fat. And that means consuming things that are a little bit lower in calories, being very calorie conscious. You know, you might want to try calorie counting. I'm an endomorph, and, and I have all the experience in the world with doing stuff like this. I have done everything under the sun to try and lose weight, and maybe like you or other people who are overweight, you've tried a thousand different things, but you never really commit, you know what I mean? So I what I found worked the best for me as an endomorph is that I kept a, a food log, a journal of just what I was eating. And then I looked back at the end of the day and I kind of assessed what I ate and I kind of figured out the calories. You can Google things that have calories if they don't have like a nutritional label. Um, and then the more that you do that kind of thing, counting calories, uh, figure out how many calories you need a day, depending on your body size. It's going to be kind of not completely accurate if you like Google a calculator, a calorie calculator, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it'll be enough to help you lose weight, that's for sure. And then if you do that long enough, you don't have to calorie count as much. You can kind of eyeball things or you just become very calorie conscious. So living a lifestyle as an endomorph doesn't, it's like for me, I don't struggle with it because I've learned over time. I've, I practice with all the, the calorie tools and stuff like that. And I don't struggle and have such a hard time with it because I'm calorie conscious. Okay, that's the end goal. It's not to live your entire life you know, microscoping your food with a magnifying glass, it's learning how to be conscious of calories and make good decisions. So if you're an endomorph and you're struggling with being overweight, you know, your insecurity might be that you're, you struggle with the weight. And I encourage you that there is a lot of things that you can do. And if you're an endomorph, that's going to work out for you in another way that I'll talk about later in the podcast. So let's talk about ectomorphs. So the opposite, ectomorphs are going to have to work harder to gain weight, which means you're going to have to find things that are more calorie dense. And so, like I was talking about earlier, McDonald's is very calorie dense, but it doesn't do a lot of good for your body. And it's hard on your metabolism. And you're just going to feel hungry again anyway. Like I've, I've met people who are ectomorphs or YouTube people and they eat a whole bucket of KFC. And it's like, uh, that's great and everything, but it's, it's bad for your body and it's not going to keep you full. It might just make you sick, right? You might not even make you full and, and keep you full until your next meal. So you'll, you'll need to not worry so much about like, 
oh, this, this is too high in calories, it's probably not going to be your problem. Your problem is going to be eating so much, like your body's going to want you to stop, but you're going to have to keep eating. So to do that, you're going to have to do some research into the food you're eating. And like, there are a lot of YouTube channels out there. Like since I'm in the health and fitness industry on YouTube, I see a lot of these channels that are very big, successful channels. And all they do is put out videos on how to make meals. That's not really my forte because <laughs> I'm not the greatest cook. I can cook some mean chicken and rice and uh, that's, that is about my peak. So <laughs> if I was you, I would be going on YouTube and looking up meals. And uh, so yeah, you might struggle with eating a lot. So do some research and figure out meals that are gonna work for you. Same thing, you could look up a calorie uh, calculator and see how much you should have, that might help. But um, you might just wanna focus on eating a lot of high quality foods, especially if you're working out, you're gonna need a lot of protein. So things that might help with you are like meal shakes, like you can get shakes like high in protein or high in carbs, you can get all kinds of different shakes or like meal replacements. I don't advocate for replacing food with shakes or supplements. Food is always best, it's better for your body. Um, but if you're in a pantry struggling, you could always do those, you know, like uh, those boosts in a a bottle those are those are pretty good um yeah so let's move on to mesomorphs so i leave mesomorphs last because i have the least to talk about with them um people usually struggle with either losing weight or gaining weight nobody i haven't personally seen people on youtube or google saying i'm really struggling with doing a good job maintaining <laughs> you know what i mean uh i'm sure there's there's people out there that have struggles as a mesomorph, but I, I think the biggest thing would be keeping everything in balance would be the hardest. Not working so hard to go in one direction or the other, but to play both sides of the field. And uh, you're probably still gonna have to work on gaining an ideal weight, even though you might have a, a naturally healthy, uh, you might be, like have the genetics that have a body that puts you in a good place, but you might wanna gain more or you might want to lose it, right? You might want to lose a bit of weight. It depends on what your lifestyle is, right? So if you're a mesomorph, you're going to have to struggle with that balance because I, I think that people who are mesomorphs can just as easily struggle with putting on fat if they're not careful. So, yeah, you know what? I think that we've talked eating to death. Let's move on. So the biggest principle that I found wor has worked is calories in, calories out. It's very simple. A lot of people love it. Some people hate it. But it's it's thinking about how many calories you eat in a day versus how many calories you burn. So the best thing to do is to figure out how much you move, how much you work out. And, and if you can, figure out how many calories you're burning when you do that. And then you can figure out how many calories you need to uh, replace that or to just get by throughout the rest of the day. Like some people consume calories at a deficit which means it's less than what they need in a day some people consume more so that they can gain weight it depends on where you're at right because the the universal calorie consumption size is 2,000 calories a day for me I think it's probably 2,500 a day you know for someone else it might be 1,500 it really depends on who you are but the one principle that doesn't change is that Calories in, calories out. You should be consuming as much calories as you need for the amount that you are active in a day. Now, if you want to gain weight or lose weight, that's that's different. Now you have to look at how much you're putting out, how many calories you're putting out, you're burning, you're using. And you might want to increase that amount. You want to put out more than you're putting in. Or if you're trying to gain weight, um, I think it, your ex the exercise type matters more than how many calories you're burning because you're going to want to increase how many calories go in so that you can put on weight. But, you know, if you're a mesomorph, calories in, calories out, it, it's about maintaining that balance. So you really have an option as to which way you want to go. So we've talked about eating. Let's talk about training. So from an endomorph perspective, um, as you have to worry about consuming calories, you also have to worry about burning calories. And if you are already consuming a lot of calories, or your lifestyle is you just naturally do, 
or you have a laborious job, you need to consume a lot of calories, you're going to have to figure out how to burn calories and burn that fat. So, you know, there are a few different approaches you can take, but the, the most important thing is that you should be moving more and eating less, okay? Moving more, eating less. If you don't want to do any more research, you live by that principle. Because the amount you're moving now and the amount you're eating now, you're probably eating too much and you're not moving enough. So you just got to tip the scale the other way. HIIT workouts are really good. High intensity interval training. Those are really good workouts for burning fat. Because you go very hard for a short amount of time, take a break, go very hard again, and the workouts are about a fraction of the length of like normal gym workouts. So I love those. I use those. You can YouTube HIIT workouts. Um, a pro to being an endomorph is that you're going to have an easier time putting on muscle and weight. So you're going to have an easier time, if, if this is what you want, getting huge, right? Building up a big chest, getting big arms. You know, if you want to build a massive back, it's good for that. Especially if you want to go the powerlifting route, you want to get a really strong deadlift, you want to get a really strong bench press. Endomorphs have a natural advantage in this area, you know, with putting on size and strength. So you have, there are benefits from that. And I mean, you can do whatever kind of exercise you want to do. You don't have to do strength and powerlifting. It's just recognizing that you have an advantage in that field. You can be a, a long distance runner or an endurance swimmer. It doesn't matter what you can do, anything you want to do. But it's important to recognize the advantages and the disadvantages that you have based on your genetics. Because you have to know whether you're working with something that you're naturally good at or that you're working against it. So another tip for you working out is that you want to do things that have a high amount of, since you want to move more, you want to do things that make you move more. So HIIT workouts get you doing working very hard for short amounts of time, running in place, dropping to the ground, jumping back up, stuff like that. If that's not really your style, you can go in the gym and you can do high volume. So you do more reps and more reps means more moving, which means more calories burned. So instead of doing the t typical three sets of 10 in the gym, which is kind of the staple, you could do four sets of 12 because you're, you're muscle building, but you're also burning calories. You're moving more, which by nature will cause you to burn more calories. Cardio is probably going to be good for you in some form. Okay, don't go on a treadmill for an hour and hate your life. Find the cardio that you like. It can be the rowing machine. It can be the arc trainer. It can be going for a walk outside. It can be whatever you want it to be. So find what you like and do that. You know, that also depends on whether or not you have a really active job. You might get your cardio in at your job. If you're always on your feet, you might not need that cardio. You know, unless you're really struggling with your weight, I, you know, it can be easy. You don't actually need cardio at all if you just work on your diet. But I find that's really hard. I would rather go on the treadmill or something for 10, 20 minutes than have to crunch my diet because I love to eat. Okay. <laughs> that's just me. So, and, and cardio is always going to be good for your heart and your body, right? I want to put that out there. And, and the last thing you should consider is that if you're overweight now and you're an endomorph, consider the fact that you are moving around in a skeleton well, you're not in the skeleton. The skeleton is moving you around, and it's moving your all your fat around. Okay, your muscles are getting stronger just by moving your fat around. Um, but that does put a lot of strain on your joints because that's a lot of weight that your joints have to move with. So, if you're overweight, like very overweight, and I would not go for a run because it's going to be not great for your knees or your ankles. you got to work yourself up to a place where you lower your weight and you do things that aren't so hard on your joints at first. You work your way up to that. All right, next I want to talk about ectomorphs. So opposite again, while an endomorph has to worry about burning calories, an ectomorph has to worry about consuming calories, right? And we just talked about that, so I'm not going to get into it, but consuming a lot of calories because you want to be building muscle. You want to really be focusing on that muscle recovery aspect. So when you work out, I would be pushing and challenging your muscles a lot because if, if they're kind of stuck and they don't really want to grow, you're going to have to push them. Okay. So just like endomorphs have this natural time putting on weight, um, you don't really have to worry about that 
but what you are good at is endurance. Genetically speaking, you have bodies that are built for going for long runs. You know, a lot of people who are ectomorphs love going for runs. They can just stride forever. And while that's a really great form of exercise, it's really good for your cardiovascular health. And it might be easier for you. You might be, you know, that you might have an advantage in that area. You have to consider the fact that when you're running, you're moving a lot and you're burning a lot of calories. And that might not be beneficial for you if you want to be putting on weight. So I would be doing things that, you know, just build up your strength first and then go into some kind of hypertrophy slash muscle building program. That would be the biggest benefit to you. So you don't have to do four sets of 12 because you don't need to burn all those extra calories. You could just do the basic three sets of 10 or you could go into some kind of strength program. You know, you might naturally have a disadvantage putting on strength based on your body type, but it would be very beneficial for you to go on some kind of basic strength program, get into building squats, um, you know, deadlifts, overhead press, stuff like that. That would That would all be very beneficial for you. And it's a good foundation for putting on muscle. So I would recommend that you go on some kind of hypertrophy program. And finally, mesomorphs, you have the ideal body for bodybuilding. So you genetically, I don't know how to put this. You kind of won the lottery, okay? You're in the middle category. You can kind of go whichever way you want. You could put on size and go the strength route. You could lose weight, go to bod go the bodybuilding route or become a runner you were born with a naturally athletic build. Some people have to work very hard at having an athletic body. Some people are just born into athletic bodies. Obviously, to be an athlete, you have to play sports, you have to practice, you have to train. But I'm saying your body is, uh, it was born with an advantage in that area. So in that sense, I would work out the, with the style that your body is built for. So like athletics. So you could do athletic style workouts. Okay, you could pick up a sport. You can still go to the gym and do hypertrophy or muscle building or strength building. But just be aware of the fact that if you're a mesomorph, you might have a more athletic style body. And I would encourage you to try doing some more athletic endeavors. I'm an endomorph. And I'm athletic. I made, I made myself have an athletic body because I trained and I worked very hard. And I picked up a sport. So you're not limited to athletics if you're a mesomorph. I'm just letting you know. Like the other muscle types, or body types, sorry, you have an advantage in that area. So whichever style you pick, make sure that you commit to it. And you're going to have to commit to it just like all the other body types. So, I mean, what I found really as a disadvantage is that if you're a mesomorph, you might be a, uh, you might just settle. You know, you might just think, you know what, I have, a, I have a great body and I don't have to do anything. I don't have to work out. You know, you know I have no trouble picking up chicks. This is great. What should I bother doing with any of that? So they might, as a mesomorph, you might just be a big settler due to your good genes. So I want to caution away from that because what happens a lot of time is that people's metabolism change and develop over time. Some people, you know, they just, their metabolism has been slow from the get-go. You know, we, we, we've seen people in elementary school, they're fat kids. Or they were fat before they got to elementary school. And they were fat in junior high. And they were fat in high school. And they've always had that slow metabolism. You see people who have always been skinny. And they were skinny in elementary when it was normal. And then in junior high and high school. And they just kept being skinny. Okay. And they throughout the whole, their whole lives. And then there are people who are mesomorphs. And this is the, this is the kicker. Is that they always thought that they had the greatest body type. They never had to work at it. Until... They graduated high school or until they hit 30 or until, you know, they started putting on some fat out of nowhere and they've never had to deal with it. So they don't know how to handle it. So, um, so you be aware of the fact that your metabolism can change over time. And just because you have the greatest build right now does not mean that it will stay that way. Your metabolism naturally slows down with age. So... I would get used to living a healthy lifestyle and exercising and stuff now so that you can uh, have that incorporated into your lifestyle so that you don't have to struggle as much later in life when it hits you. Because it, it hits everyone. People who are not ready for it, once you start to slow down a bit, your age starts to get to you, your joints start to get sore, you start to move, move less. Because your body doesn't want you to move because it doesn't want you to hurt. It doesn't want you to be sore. 
It's like a protection thing. So everyone should be aware because no one is safe from aging, <laughs> right? Everyone is going to grow older at some point. So uh, regardless of the body type you have, you should be aware of uh, the fact that it's going to change over time. So building these good habits while you're young is a really good idea because it's going to give you the tools to, to handle your body through all stages of life. If you're listening to this and you're, you're not young or you're in your midlife, like it's never obviously too late to start eating clean and exercising. Your body will gain benefits from it at, at all stages, you know? That's why we have senior fitness classes, right? And we have fitness classes for everyone. So it's good to consider. So regardless of what body type you have, you can benefit from all styles of exercise. So don't think, oh, I'm an endomorph. I could never be a runner. You could be. You might have to work harder at it, but it, you can you can do it. You can do it, and you can reap the benefits from it. If you're an ectomorph, and, and you feel so weak, and you feel like you're never going to get strong, you can benefit from strength training. You might have to work harder at it, but same thing. You can still receive the same benefits. So to conclude this podcast, I just want to make sure that everybody listening knows that there are no body types that are better or worse than the other. Okay, I, I know that I said like, oh, the mesomorph is kind of the, the in-between one, so it kind of seems ideal, but that's really, it's just perspective, like, and it really depends on the choices you make on life. It can be worse to be an ectomorph, or it can be better. Same with endo, you know, same with meso. So, just to leave you with an analogy, I hated sports growing up. Uh, everyone in my family was, was athletic. My mom played a lot of volleyball, my dad was a runner, he was also a mountain climber, and my brother played hockey, and whatever sport we both picked up, he was just better at it, or he just had an easier time getting into it, and I always struggled with it, and I hated sports, and I didn't ever go into them, until high school, when I got into the football team, and I realized that, hey, my body works for this sport, because they, they put me in there as a lineman. And I had a really important job there. And my body type and size was perfect. All my life I thought that I was big and I was fat. And I, I couldn't, I didn't fit in anywhere. Until I got to football and I realized that my body had a role. And it was perfect for what I was doing. So football has the offensive line and the defensive line. Which already, they're both built for big guys. But already they're both built for different kinds of big guys. And then you move backwards and then you have running backs, and you have linebackers, and you have DBs, you know, you have all these different positions, and receivers, and, and everyone, like, body type can play a big role at, in what position you have, so you can kind of play to your strengths, right, go into a position where your body, you know, it's naturally, it wants to be in, right, and I've seen it, people go into positions that aren't great for their body type, and they do well, and, and they succeed, and that's, that's possible. You can do anything you want with your body. You just should be aware that if you're working with, you you know, you're working at a disadvantage. So not just not to quit, not to get frustrated and feel discouraged because just be aware of the fact that you're kind of going against the grain. And that's not bad. It just means that you're going to have to work a little bit harder. And um, it's just always best to be aware of the kind of body type you have and how to work with it. Don't work against it. Don't think, man, my metabolism sucks. Like, I, I hate my body. I can't do this. I'm just going to starve myself, right? That's working against. It's not working with. It's not finding the foods that are healthy that you like to eat or the, the best way to plan out your meals for the day. You know, just giving up or being frustrated and doing going, taking the drastic approach, it's just not going to help you. you got to work with it. And whatever you do, like... Whatever training you go into or exercise or what kind of eating you take or eating you take, whatever like meal plan you go into or how you eat, like commit to this for your life, okay? Don't do this because you listened on this podcast, got a little bit excited, did something for about two weeks and quit. Like I'm giving you guys tools to deal with this for the rest of your life, okay? So you want to get into a place where it's just part of your life, you know, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think, oh, I'm uh, I'm an ectomorph, I have to just eat more. You just eat more, or you just, you figure out what kind of foods to eat. You want to get to a place where you don't have to think about it as much. And that is the ideal place for you to be in. So that you can learn all these things in like a couple years, and then you don't have to think about them again for the rest of your life. You can just live a life 
that is best for your body type. You could exercise in a way that is best for your body type. And then don't think about it, right? Just just do it and have fun. And, you know, things do change over time and you just want to prepare yourself for that. So no matter what age you are uh, or how your body is now, you know, you just want to make sure that you always are aware and you're adapting. So that's going to conclude the podcast. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you made it to the end of the podcast, I really appreciate you sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did and leave a comment on uh, a podcast idea because I have a list of podcast ideas and I'm just going to go through them. But if you guys have any ideas, you know, that gain a bit of popularity, I would love to do a podcast in that direction. It takes a bit of research, but I am happy to talk about whatever people think needs to be discussed in the health and fitness industry. Thank you guys so much for listening. Colossnex out.